Okay, so a student sent me a question with a inclined slope with some angle theta that is known. Let's start a list of what we know. And there are two masses connected by a incompressible and taut rod that is massless, but uh, let's call it M. Let's call one of the masses M1 and the other mass M2. And what else do we know? We know that there are two coefficients of kinetic friction uh, at play here, u1, mu1, and mu2. So to do a problem like this, it's just a little bit scary because there are two boxes, and they're sort of related by this uh, rod, which means that their acceleration is going to be identical because they're sort of moving in lockstep. But let's not get afraid and instead just write out all the forces that we know acting like we always do. So there's the normal force that's perpendicular to the surface. There's the force of gravity that's going straight downwards. And uh, perhaps we can just go ahead and break that up into the components like we normally do. Yeah. And uh, as always, this angle is going to be theta. And uh, well, we need to think about force of friction. And you should be able to intuitively figure it out, but uh, because the, you know, we're assuming that these things are sliding downwards, right? So force of friction is going to be going, uh, trying to resist that. And in the meanwhile, the tension for uh, the first block is going to be pointed downward. So let's call that T for tension. Uh, let's call this Fn1 and Fg1 so that we don't get ourselves mixed up. But uh, similarly, for over here, we're going to have Fn2. Tension is going to be pointing upwards this time. I think that's only the really big difference here. And then there's force of gravity too, and we can break that up into parallel and perpendicular components again too. And uh, force of friction is going to be, again, it's going to be pointing upwards. So force of friction two. I forgot to fill it in the first time, force of friction one. Okay. So with all this in mind, there's a lot of things at play here, and it looks kind of scary, but let's just try not to be scared and just write out the equations. And I think as it turns out, this problem isn't going to end up being too bad. So all right then, let's take a look. So first I'm going to write the equations in the perpendicular component. This little sign here is a little notation that just means perpendicular. It's kind of like an upside down T-junction. But for mass 1, all the forces at play in the perpendicular direction are, well, it's just Fn1 minus m1g uh, cosine theta is equal to zero, because there's no motion in the perpendicular direction. It's all parallel. That's why we chose these x's. But uh, OK, well, this is just to mu, what is this, mu1? Uh, no, no, I'm sorry. It's just force normal 1. Uh, it's not friction. My bad. Got confused there. But similarly for m2, it uh, should be nice and simple minus m2g cosine theta is equal to zero. And it's very nice for us because uh, just with these two equations, they're not very complicated, and they're going to let us solve for fn1 and fn2, which is a great piece of information to know when we want to calculate friction in a minute, right? So now we're going to look at the perpendicular uh, parallel components for m1, starting with m1. So for m1, it looks to me like... Uh, well, let's define a positive direction just for the sake of our sanity, but let's say going down the slope is positive, and let's say upwards the slope is negative. And I choose these signs um, because it looks, I usually like taking the direction of motion to be positive, but uh, it's ultimately all just your own convention, right? Do whatever floats your boat. But okay, just looking at whatever is in the positive direction, I'm seeing tension is gonna be positive, uh, force of gravity is gonna be positive, whereas the force of friction is going to be negative. Yeah? So let's just write that down. So tension plus m1g sine theta minus the force of friction 1 is equal to mass 1 times acceleration. And this right here is not so complicated. It's just the kinetic uh, friction coefficient times fn1, which we knew from earlier. And then m2 is quite similar. You just have to remember that the tension is going to be in the opposite direction this time now, as judged by the diagram. So we get minus tension 
plus M2G sine theta. And uh, friction is still pointing upwards, which is the negative direction. So this is M2, mu2, F N2 is equal to M2 times A. And remember that these are going to be the same A, and that's one of our crucial assumptions about the problem, because the rod is given to be incompressible and, uh, and uh, taut, right? It's just like a solid rod that connects them together. So if they're moving in lockstep, that means they're also accelerating in lockstep, right? Because uh, acceleration is just twice the derivative of, sorry, the second derivative of a uh, position. But yeah, uh, at this point, we really should have all we need, right? If our unknowns are tension and acceleration, it looks to me like everything else here is known. Because we have the masses, we have gravity, we know what theta is, uh, we know the friction coefficients, and from up before, we know the normal forces as well. So that should be all you need. So figure that out. Good luck.